What is happening, guys? Welcome to my basement. You know, I have been rereading a ton of my Swamp Thing collected editions, and I thought we'd take a look at my Swamp Thing by Nancy Collins Omnibus today because I feel it is pretty underrated. Let's check it out. <laughs> Welcome back everybody, we have Swamp Thing by Nancy A. Collins. Here we have a list of pencilers, inkers, colorists, and letterers that were involved in this collected edition. Our detailed table of contents page followed by an introduction page by Nancy Collins and a foreword by Stuart Moore. This book collects Swamp Thing annual number 6 and 7. Swamp Thing number 110 to 139, Vertigo Jam number 1, Black Orchid number 5, as well as some other miscellaneous short stories. This is a very solid and underrated run, in my opinion. Is it better than Alan Moore's run? No, it's not better. Of course it's not better, but it is damn good. And it is an excellent contribution to the Swamp Thing universe, and does expand heavily on some of Moore's ideas. Even though there is a large, uncollected gap of Swamp Thing between Moore and Collins, spanning almost 60 issues. So who is Nancy A. Collins? Well, she is an American horror fiction writer, best known for her series of vampire novels, according to Google. She's written other comics as well, including Jason vs. Leatherface, Predator, as well as her own one-shot. This book starts off strong with annual number seven. It's a really unique, mature horror story about various murders and a specific monster. Solid characters are created here that later appear in future issues. But the big question is, what do we get in this omnibus? We get a lot of individual horror stories within the Swamp Thing universe, as well as some thoughtfully built continuing story arcs. Stories about monsters, ghosts, pirates, domestic violence, a crazy preacher. Stories about Swamp Thing and his family, Abigail and Teffy. Yes, Swamp Thing has a kid by this point. We get some new and returning characters and villains, a lot of stories with the popular villain Arcane, which are done really well and kind of cross over from the Sandman series with its current timeline about Lucifer abandoning hell. We get a really awesome new character named Lady Jane, who is part of the Green, who is brought to Earth to assess Teffy in many ways. We get the return of the Sutherland Corporation and some interesting plot lines there. The return of Constantine, of course. We get the return of Chester, a middle-aged, red-haired hippie. We get a lot of visually pleasing painted covers, some of which are definitely some of my favorites of the series. So if you are into Swamp Thing, you definitely want to add this book to your shelf. I just hope they fill in those gaps and release more collected editions from issues 65 to 110, which we don't have yet. So this may be the only omnibus I paid full price for. At the time, this book was said to be out of print, so I panicked and found it at one of my local comic shops. But that's what happens sometimes. Turns out it was restocked, so get it while you can. I hate to compare it to Moore's run, but you kind of have to. I mean, it's building on some of his original ideas, and he set the bar really, really high with his writing, not to mention the artists Moore had working with him during his run were far superior. And that, of course, is just my opinion. So that's all there is to say without spoilers, I hope. Nancy's run is unique and is definitely a wonderful body of work. So until next time, guys, get on that subscribe button, and we'll catch you in another video. Take care. Mm -hmm.